both the Russian Empire and the Soviet Union systematically oppressed the Turkic people of Central Asia. The Turks of Central Asia were forced to abandon their nomadic and tribal ways of life and assimilate with the Russians. However, the process of conquering Central Asia was a long one for the Russians. Because of fierce, relentless resistance by Islamic states such as the Emirate of Bukhara and the various tribes such as the Kazakh, Kyrgyz, Turkmen, Uyghur, Uzbek, Bashkir and Altai. Peter the Great was previously humiliated by the Turkic people of Central Asia in the russo khivan War of 1717. Thousands of Russian invaders were killed by defending Turkic armies in Central Asia. Furthermore, many Russians also died even before engaging in battle due to the harsh terrain of the Kazakh and Karakum deserts and due to thirst and starvation. However, many years later, the Russians finally conquered the Central Asian region of Turkestan after defeating various Khanates such as the Khanates of Bukhara, Khiva and Kokand. Ancient Central Asian cities such as Samarkand and Bukhara had a rich history of Persian architecture and literature. These traditions were traditions that continued into the Emirate period. The systems of governance in these regions was superior to both communist and capitalist systems that the region would have to endure later on. Soon after the Russian Empire colonized the Turkestan region, the indigenous populations in Central Asia were forced to renounce their water rights and irrigation lands on the behalf of the Russian settlers. Since the policy of specialization in cotton production was implemented in Turkestan, and the grain needs were supplied from Russia, Turkestan and the steppe fell into starvation because of collapse of grain supply in the war years. Moreover, recruitment of Muslim natives by the Tsarist regime was the last triggering factor for the breakout of a large-scale uprising in 1916. The uprisings in the steppe continued until the February Revolution. By spring 1916, the Russian Imperial Army was stretched thin. Because of ongoing war, there was a desperate need for able-bodied men for military service in 1916. To fill the growing need, Tsar Nicholas II passed a decree on 25th June 1916, ordering a special draft of the male population of Russia's Central Asian subjects. This draft would have dramatic repercussions when implemented, sparking a revolt which destabilized imperial colonial rule shortly before revolutions in Russia would sweep the Russian Empire away. Implemented on 4th July 1916, the draft led to violent resistance in rural areas of Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, which spread to nearby Kyrgyzstan and Turkmenistan within a few weeks. One of the most destructive events of the 1916 revolt was at the district of Jizakh, south of Tashkent. One of the poorest and most isolated districts of Central Asia the predominantly sheep and goat herding Central Asian population rioted and attacked the town of Jizakh on 13th July, murdering several Russian and Central Asian officials, including the Russian military commander. 
The Jizakh rebels, led by local tribal chieftains and village mullahs, declared a jihad or holy war against the Russian infidels. They destroyed the local infrastructure, including railway lines, bridges, post stations, and burnt government lists of draftees. The Jizakh revolt continued until Russian soldiers retook the town on 17th July. Over 1,000 Central Asians were killed in the subsequent pacification of the region by Russian military force. While all of this was happening, popular unrest spread beyond Jizakh to the region which is now known as Kyrgyzstan, where decades of ethnic tensions exploded with incredible violence. The spark came in mid-August 1916, when a group of Russian settlers lured 500 Kazakh herdsmen to negotiate the return of Kazakh livestock that had been stolen by the Russians. This was a trap. The Kazakhs were locked in a cage and ripped apart by angry Russian settlers. A full-blown war between Russian settlers and Kazakh and Kyrgyz herdsmen then erupted, with both sides committing barbaric atrocities until it was ruthlessly squashed by Russian reinforcements. The Russian army slaughtered entire Central Asian tribes in retaliation. In addition to the revolt of Kazakhs and Kyrgyz, several tribes of Turkmen also saw an opportunity to overthrow Russian colonial rule and by late September were attacking Russian settlements and patrols. In the midst of all of this chaos, the 1917 October Revolution took place, which changed the landscape of the whole region. When the Communist Revolution took place in 1917, most Central Asians did not understand the motives or the ideology of the revolution, though most applauded the collapse of imperial power. The October Revolution was supported by people of Turkestan because of Lenin's promises regarding equality and self-determination before 1917. However, the people were soon disappointed as this promise was not delivered. The natural resources of Turkestan and the Central Asian steppes were too vital for the Russian economy. Furthermore, Central Asia housed two million Russian settlers. Therefore, it was difficult for the Bolsheviks to let Muslim lands have self-determination. In May 1917, a Congress of Muslim scholars and intellectuals convened and issued a demand for the formation of an autonomous republic of Turkestan in federation with Russia. The Soviets rejected this demand and now the Central Asian Turks were at war with the Soviets. The decision by the Soviets not to grant Central Asia independence triggered another rebellion. This time, the rebellion was larger and was led by a unified Turkic group known as the Basmachi movement. The Basmachi anti-Soviet guerrilla movement originated in the Fargana Valley but spread throughout the region, crossing tribal and class lines in response to Russian oppression. The Basmachi movement attracted a variety of different types of followers, which included angry locals whose families had been killed by Russians, former Amirs, Naqshbandi Sufi sheikhs, bandits, and exiled pan turkists from the Ottoman Empire, such as Enver Pasha. Although many of these groups had little, little in common, what brought them together was the fight against the Russian occupier and oppressor. In their heyday, the Basmachis enjoyed tremendous support from the brutalized local population, 
They had free movement through the region's villages which enabled them to attack Red Army outposts and trains from the mountain bases. In 1918, the Soviets attacked Kokand in modern-day Uzbekistan, where the Soviets raped and looted on a large scale. The violent killing of the city's Muslim defenders also took place at Bukhara's gates when the Soviets reached them shortly afterwards. Here, however, they received word that the Emir would negotiate and was, a willi and was willing to leave power. Instead, all but two members of the negotiating team were killed and the Russian forces' communications lines were cut off. Soon after, local Muslims turned on the city's Russian population, murdering hundreds. The Soviets withdrew to Samarkand, where they eventually were reinforced from Tashkent. The Soviets ordered to reach an agreement with the Emir. This agreement stopped the fighting and recognized Bukharan independence for the time being. Eventually, because the local resistance to the Soviets was so intense and strong, the Soviets began to reverse various policy decisions that had been made in Turkestan. For example, the population of Turkestan was allowed to operate under Sharia law once again and Islamic schools were reopened. This caused much of the local population to perceive the conditions in Soviet Turkestan as being livable once again. Therefore, many locals left the Basmachi rebellion and went back to work as they were tired of the war. Eventually, the Basmachi movement faded away as it could no longer gain enough local support. After the Basmachi had been defeated, many of its leaders fled to Afghanistan. Yes. Stalin took power, he created a series of man-made famines through his collectivization policies across various regions of the USSR, such as Ukraine and Kazakhstan. These famines did not emerge as a result of natural disasters such as drought or crop failure. This was a part of a deliberate policy of the communist regime aimed at physical elimination of various ethnic groups such as Ukrainians and Kazakhs. The Kazakh famine was among the deadliest in the USSR and le directly led to the deaths of approximately one-third of the Kazakh population. The famine also triggered the emigration of several hundred thousand survivors and rapid irreversible decline of the nomadic way of life of the inhabitants of the region's steppes. As nomads, Kazakhs carried out seasonal migrations along the predefined routes with their animal herds such as camels, sheep and horses. This way of life was an adaptation to the peculiarities of the Kazakh steppe environment including the scarcity of good pasture land and water. Without their herds, Kazakhs could no longer be nomads. They had no livelihood or means of acquiring food. Prior to the famine, being Kazakh was closely intertwined with being a nomad. But with the death of their animal herds, most Kazakhs were forced to take up settled lives and this was a dramatic reorientation of their identity. Though hunger struck Russian and Ukrainian peasant communities in the republics north and southeast, it hit the nomadic Kazakhs with particular intensity. Nomads began slaughtering their livelihood 
their livestock herds for food and fleeing the Republic. During the years of 1931 to 1933, the height of the Kazakh famine, more than 1.1 million people, the vast majority of them Kazakhs, left the Republic. They fled to neighboring Soviet republics, but also abroad, to the Chinese province of Xinjiang, which bordered Soviet Kazakhstan to the east. Many of these refugees would never return to Kazakhstan, settling in China or in neighboring Soviet republics permanently. Within Kazakhstan, massive uprisings, some numbering several thousand participants, erupted in the fall of 1929 and throughout the years of 1930 to 1933. Red Army troops brutally put down these rebellions. Great Kazakh poet Sadia Khas was arrested and executed by the Soviets in 1938 for preaching independence from Russia. <laughs> the Soviets created artificial divisive borders in Turkestan in order to divide the region and gain political control over the area more easily. For example, the places known as Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan and Turkmenistan are a product of Soviet rule. Central Asia and the area of Turkestan previously had a more fluid identity as all races such as Kyrgyz, Kazakh and Uzbek lived peacefully together and there were no specific borders indicating where each tribe lived. In 1924, Moscow began to reorganize the borders of Soviet Central Asia based upon the principle of nationality. It cobbled together territories with distinct cultural, historical and environmental features. However, the results of these artificial borders are evident today. Soviet policy created Uzbekistan and the Uzbeks, Kyrgyzstan and the Kyrgyz and others out of more fragmented and fluid identities that had existed earlier. This policy brought about the gradual transformation of the Fargana Valley from a relatively cohesive unit that functioned as a whole to that of a mutually dependent unit constructed and assisted under the guise of Soviet solidarity and finally resulted in the fractured and ill-functioning modern layout brought by the collapse of the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union collapsed, this gave rise to serious disputes and conflicts. The borders in the Fergana Valley became an especially strong source of tension. The borders crossed the transport routes, roads and railways and watercourses, thus adversely affecting the economies and political relation amongst the countries in the region. After the Central Asian states finally gained independence from the Soviets in 1991, after hundreds of years of Russian oppression, they inherited a corrupt political system in which extremely despotic leaders such as Islam Karimov, Nazarbayev, Imam Ali Rahman and Turkmen Bashi took power. Once the Soviet Union was dissolved in December 1991, the local political elites, who were mostly former leaders of the Republican structures of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, grasped the opportunity and started to establish new authoritarian regimes.
This led to unprecedented levels of corruption. In, in a 2019 report by Transparency International, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan ranked as some of the most corrupt countries in the world. Central Asia was once the cradle of Islamic civilization and the center of great empires such as the Abbasid and Khwarezm empires. It was once the heart of the Silk Road and produced great scientists, poets and polymaths. However, after the Russians colonized the region, it has embarked on a journey of constant decline and instability. Greed and tyranny during the Soviet era gave birth to the corrupt rulers who rule much of Central Asia today.